Please welcome Michael Peterson, Chairman and CEO of the Peter G. Peterson Foundation. Thank you, thank you. Well, good morning and welcome to US 2050. The Peterson Foundation is very proud to have sponsored this important research in partnership with the Ford Foundation. So I want to start with just some thank yous. Um, first, I want to thank the most important person for this project, uh, my colleague, Senior Policy Advisor at the Foundation, Susan Tanaka. Where are you? There you are. Uh, Susan has two grown kids, but this is her baby. Uh, and this baby has actually been years in the making. I remember the day when Susan came in to talk to my father and me about an idea she had. And as you know, the Peterson Foundation is focused on America's fiscal challenges, where demographics is the key driver. We have a large baby boom generation uh, living much longer, which means more years in retirement. We have very high health care costs in this country, as you all know. And you combine that with revenues that are inadequate to pay for our promises, and you have the core fiscal challenge that we face. And so when we had been looking at that, we had been very focused on the numbers. 76 million baby boomers, 10,000 per day turning 65, the reduced size of the labor force and the result fewer workers per retiree, causing a structural imbalance in the budget. And Susan asked the key question, have you ever wondered about America's future population in greater detail? We know the math and numbers present challenges, but shouldn't we also understand the deeper trends of America's future? So not just the number of, of people, but how diverse will society be? What education levels will people have? How much will they earn? And she was exactly right. The numbers matter, but the underlying trends are a critical and overlooked part of this story. And my father and I looked at each other and wondered, why didn't we think of that? And like all good CEOs, I've been claiming full credit for this brilliant idea ever since. <laughs> so thank you, Susan, for that. <laughs> Uh, so that's how we began here, and, and Susan really was involved in, in it from the very beginning and, and through execution here today. I also want to thank the Ford Foundation and John Irons. We've had a long relationship with John dating back to his time at the Economic Policy Institute, and it's been great to partner with him and my good friend Darren Walker. I want to thank our distinguished advisory committee who helped guide the project from the beginning and reviewed and selected all of the proposals. I also want to thank David Wessel and Louise Shainer at the, at the Hutchins Center at Brookings for their great work coordinating the project. Uh, but really, most importantly, I want to thank the authors of the 31 papers. Now, in all honesty, I haven't had time to read them all. Uh, it may take me some time, but I'm pretty confident I can finish them all by 2050. <laughs> uh, but seriously, their scholarly efforts are really tremendous here. And Peterson and Ford, we can provide the funding and ask for proposals, but at the end of the day, the output and impact of this project is yours. So thank you very much for that and the 31,000 hours or more that you probably put into this. Um, let me talk a little bit more about what 2050 is and why we did this. Ultimately, the Peterson Foundation's mission is about the future. We advocate for improving the future because we're concerned that our growing debt represents a growing burden on future generations. And to advocate for the future, we first need to see and explain that future. What are the future trends in our economy? How does our budget change over the coming decades? And by seeing and explaining the future, we hope to change the future. The current path of our federal budget is unsustainable. And the simple truth is that absent change, these budget decisions or non-decisions will harm future opportunity and our role in the world. But if we can see, explain, and advocate for the future, we can change that future. Ultimately, through better fiscal policy, our goal is to secure a stronger, healthier, and more inclusive economy for the next generation. And in fact, this is what US 2050 is all about, illuminating the factors that will influence the future so we can act today to enable better outcomes for all. And what we explore through US 2050 are interconnected and complex factors that will shape our population, workforce, economy, and society in the decades ahead. We ask what these dynamic trends will mean for our future well-being and connect these strands into policy insights. So the research covers many areas, including labor force participation, education, poverty, immigration, fertility, health status, caregiving, family structure, retirement savings, and the future of Congress. And taken together, the papers provide a comprehensive look at the challenges that lie ahead for America. And these connections lead to insights that we hope will inform and guide a policy framework that makes us better prepared for what's ahead. 
So US 2050 underscores that to build a better future, we must start the work now. And to us, this research is really just the starting point for further investigation, and we're committed to continuing this important work. So thank you for joining us at this critical conversation about our collective future and the demographic, socioeconomic, and fiscal trends shaping America. With that, let me hand it over to John Irons, Director, Future of Work at the Ford Foundation. Thank you, John, for your participation. Great. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of the Ford Foundation uh, and our president, Darren Walker, who unfortunately couldn't be here today, I'm pleased to welcome you to the U.S. 2050 Spring Conference. Um, I also want to thank Michael Peterson and Susan Tanak in particular, as mentioned, um, for both their partnership and their leadership on this project. So, so thank you both for this. Across eight decades, our mission at the Ford Foundation has been to reduce poverty and injustice, strengthen democratic values, promote international cooperation, and advance human achievement. Some, some minor goals there. Um, and in this, area, in this era of the foundation, we have made challenging inequality a central focus of our, of our work. And we think about inequality in many ways, from economic disparities, but also to political and cultural inequalities. Sometimes these inequities result from more overt discrimination by gender, by race, by caste, migration, or disability status. But in other cases, the rules of the game really lock in existing power imbalances and thus perpetuate and grow these inequities. And we see that in many aspects of how our economic system and political systems are organized, from college admissions to criminal justice, from capital markets that reward short-term thinking to labor and social protections that are too often inadequate for too many. As our president, Darren Walker, often emphasizes, these are all challenges that did not arise overnight. They were decades or centuries even in the making and will take sustained efforts to reverse course in many cases. And that's why we joined in this 2050 effort um, with the Peterson Foundation to help create a better focus on, on the long term. Um, at the same time, I'm also mindful of what Keynes said, that in the long run we're all dead. Um, but I'm also mindful of the adage that the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. And the second best time is today. So the topics that will be discussed, as Michael mentioned, range from um, inequality, work, fertility, poverty, migration, fiscal policy, caregiving, health, financial stability, political institutions, education. Uh, these are all big issues. Um, there are no uh, easy solutions. There are no quick fixes. We do have to think about the long term. But by better understanding these issues now, we're in a better position to understand their causes and thus shape our future tomorrow. Um, too often when we think about the future, um, we think about it as something that's going to be happen to us, something that's beyond our control. But, but it's not. We know this. Just as choices made 30 years ago are impacting us today, the choices we make today through policy, through business decisions, through the, the civil sector um, will impact the U.S. and the globe in 2050 and for generations to come. That's why it's so important. I know that many of us in this room are mourning the loss of the economist Alan Kruger. Um, let me end by giving him the last word uh, this morning. In the remarks from his 2012 speech on inequality, where he introduced the idea of the Great Gatsby Curve, he wrote, I want to emphasize that restoring more fairness to the economy would be good for all parts of American society. This is not a zero-sum game. The evidence suggests that a growing middle class is good for the economy and that a more equal distribution of income would hasten economic growth. So with that, I look forward to the presentations today. And thank you again to the Peterson team, and thank you all for coming. Thanks.